Today, my brothers, I want to give you the best advice I can possibly give to you on how to become a man. We live in a day where most so-called men are actually just overgrown boys. Men who are working lousy dead-end jobs with minimum pay, obsessing over comic books, video games, anime, and in worse cases, drooling over Instagram models. Most of you spend all of your time doing things to satisfy your flesh and abstain from doing anything hard or the least bit challenging. You go around expressing your love for comic books and fictional characters by literally wearing them on your sleeves. I don't care how cool Batman is. Walking around with a Batman logo or t-shirt looks lame. Wearing the symbols of a fictional character doesn't make you that character. I've seen men wearing tight-fitting shirts with a drawn six-pack on it and a Superman or Spider-Man logo on the chest, thinking that this will somehow garner the right kind of attention from girls. Do you think Bruce Wayne would look cool walking around Gotham City, wearing a shirt of his favorite superhero? You can be tall, handsome, and have muscles, but you will look like a total weirdo wearing a shirt like that. If you regularly get rejected by girls, to the point where you begin to desperately chase girls that are below average at best, that indicates that your confidence and self-esteem has dropped significantly low. If all this describes you, then you are not a man, you are a boy. Most boys are not that valuable or useful to the world. They may be a blessing to their parents and a joy to their grandparents. But if they ever want to be a blessing to all of mankind, they're going to have to become a man. I will give you seven things you need to do and follow if you want to become the best man you can possibly be. One, never conform to this world. Being a man means living life on your own terms. If you're anxious about what others think of you, worrying if you're conforming to a standard you didn't set for yourself, then you aren't living your own life but rather you are like a little boy who is trying to fit in or get the approval of others. We see little kids try to conform to the ways of other kids. However, a man would work towards his own mission and goals he has laid out for himself, not follow the trends society has set. If anything, conform to the things of God instead. Live by his rules and principles, and you will be much better off than the rest of this world. 2. Endure pain and suffering. Pain and suffering builds character. You will often notice that people who are very spoiled lack character, or have none whatsoever. They live for nothing but indulgence. They easily become annoyed and stressed out from any tiny bit of hardship that comes their way. I'm talking about the rich loser who gets angry when somebody rings his doorbell and has to put up a no solicitors sign because they don't want to deal with the hardships of having to exchange words with some strangers looking to sell their services. Imagine the horror. Or how about the guy at work who gets paid more than what he's actually worth? Who gets annoyed whenever a co-worker asks him to fix a problem, but he would rather extend his lunch break another 15 minutes? These are extreme examples of people who don't want to endure any pain and suffering. You want to be the complete opposite of that. You want to try to suffer and endure as much hardship as you can, to not only develop your physical toughness, but to increase your mental capacity as well. Instead of being like these losers who try to drown themselves in happiness and indulgences, instead learn to develop the capacity to enjoy less happiness. You can do this by putting up your video games, canceling your streaming services like Netflix, limit your browsing on social media to once a week, and definitely abstain from looking at any nudity and explicit content for your own sake. Replace all of these with things you don't enjoy doing, but that are beneficial to you, such as physical training, working more than 40 hours per week, learning something difficult but useful, you are going to have hardships in life. And so the goal is to train your mind and body so that you will be able to withstand those times of tribulation. You will be more likable if you have thick skin 
and are not quick to anger. On to the next point. 3. Increase in wisdom and knowledge. Who do people often most gravitate towards? To the guy who seems to always know what he is doing, or the guy who doesn't have a clue at all. If you're at work, would you not rather be around someone who can fix just about any problem, as opposed to being around some knucklehead who can't really solve anything? The answer is obvious, and you should not only want to be around people who are smart and knowledgeable, but you should also strive to be that person yourself. But this can apply in every area of life, not just being able to fix problems at work. But how about knowing how to speak someone else's language? Some people make extra money at work for having the ability to translate or communicate with foreign speakers. I would personally recommend that you start reading books, listening to self-development talk shows, Baptist preaching, researching how to fix certain machinery or equipment at your job, or just researching how to do anything that is hard but useful. You live in times where you have access to so much information in the world. Men of all pedigrees freely share their knowledge on the Internet and through books for people like yourself to receive. So put up the stupid PlayStation, unsubscribe from those worthless Let's Players on YouTube, and start watching videos that can actually teach you something you can apply to your life. For those of you who are familiar with the Bible, King Solomon, who was the son of David, didn't ask God for riches and fame, but rather he asked for wisdom. And because he asked God for this, not only did God give him that, but he also gave him the things he didn't ask for, which was wealth, riches, and honor. The Bible clearly teaches that wisdom is the best thing a man can have, and therefore, you should seek out as much of it as you can. I'm going to give you some recommendations, and you may think this is an infomercial. But just to set the record straight, this video is not being sponsored by anybody. So one book I would highly recommend, besides the King James Bible itself, is a book called Building a Better Brain by Peter Hollins. I recommend this book and any other book that teaches about the brain's neuroplasticity and how it works. These are the kind of books that will help you understand how the brain works and how you can change it so that you can begin to get rid of bad habits that are holding you back and replace them with good habits that will propel you into a better future. To learn new languages, one of the best apps you can download is Duolingo. This app is free to download and makes learning new languages really easy and fun. It's very engaging and you would be surprised how quickly you can learn a new language, especially if you are at least logging in 15 to 30 minutes a day on it. Finally, I would recommend listening to the audio KJV Bible, as well as listening to some really good preaching from Independent Fundamental Baptist, which I will leave some examples of in the description and comments of this video. Getting wisdom straight from the Word of God itself is most vital. Some of the greatest philosophers of our time got their wisdom from the Word of God. The Bible will teach you character, moral principles, how to go to heaven, and of course how to be a man. Just to name a few things. 4. Increase your value. So now that I have already told you about suffering and enduring hardship to build character, and increasing your knowledge and wisdom, these all lead to the fourth point, which is increasing your overall value as a man. There are many things in life that have value, from gold and silver to computers and cell phones. However, as human beings we have the capability of either increasing or decreasing our value. You can increase your value by being the hardest worker at your job, or you can decrease it by being a lazy bum. Increase it by having more wisdom and knowledge useful for everyday life, or decrease it by being like one of these stupid atheists who believe the T-Rex turned into a chicken and that men can turn into women. I talked about how you should read many books and get as much wisdom as you can. Once you develop the habit of doing that, use that to develop your skill set. Learn how to fix automobiles, AC units, 
and other appliances. If you have built a stronger character through enduring hardships, then you should have no problem going the extra mile to be the hardest worker at your job. You don't need a college degree to move up the ladder or land in a high-paying position at your job. You just have to have really good character, be very professional, and work the hardest out of everyone else. You've heard people say things like, He's the man, about a guy who has a reputation of being very hardworking and useful. Be that guy. Increasing your value in this way will help you move up the ladder, and you can successfully persuade anyone to help get you in a more higher-paying department, even if you don't have a college degree, or if you have no prior experience. I promise you, there are many employers out there who would rather hire a guy who works really hard, with little to no experience that can easily be trained, than some clown with a college degree who has been fired from multiple jobs because he lacks character. If you are offering to help co-workers, even with something that isn't considered to be your job, you will develop a reputation, and having that reputation will simply increase your value as a man. 5. Become lethal and dangerous. It should go without saying. But today there are a lot of men who can't defend themselves in a hand-to-hand -hand combat. There is no virtue whatsoever in being a pacifist, and neither does the Bible teach such a thing. The Bible says we are to be meek and humble, but many don't understand that being meek simply means to be one who is dangerous, but keeps his sword sheathed. You have the capability of inflicting bodily harm, but you only do it if necessary. Finding an old-school boxing gym is a good place to start, since they are relatively cheaper than other gyms and are far more efficient. I would strongly recommend learning how to box and how to wrestle. Focus on those two martial arts only and worry about dipping into other martial arts later. But boxing and wrestling are the two hardest martial arts to master, and they are also the two most dominant martial arts in combat sports. Most wrestlers are actually better at taking hits than kickboxers because of the strong bone density they developed from their wrestling training and from grappling. But don't just stop there when it comes to combat training. Also, find yourself a good weightlifting coach that can develop your strength for these combat sports. Too many fools in this day and age talk about weightlifting and strength not being important when it comes to fighting. That is absolute nonsense. Strength is not a replacement for good technique, but strength augments your technique. It is what increases other athletic attributes. Strength is what we need in order to walk, in order to physically function. We can't even breathe without strength. So to say that strength is not important when it comes to being a fighter is simply ignorant. Having a significant strength advantage against an opponent who has more experience can be the ultimate equalizer. A perfect example of this is one of the most dominant boxers in recent history, a terrifying knockout artist known as Triple G. Gennady Gennadievich Golovkin. This destroyer from Kazakhstan conquered the middleweight division, having knocked out 90% of all of his challengers, and was known for having a titanium chin and heavyweight knockout power. He had a 25 knockout streak at one point, and never been knocked down once in his career. Just look him up and watch his highlights to see what a force of reckoning he was. What made Triple G so much stronger than any other middleweight boxer was that he trained like a heavyweight boxer. He would lift the same amount of weight a 300-pound fighter would lift. Being able to lift and swing really heavy weight increases your bone density so much that you will be able to withstand hard blows. It will increase your punching power and ability to inflict serious damage. There were many fighters who had better boxing technique than Triple G, but they would all eventually succumb to his power. After walking them down round after round, absorbing their best blows, he would eventually break them down with his relentless pressure and unmerciful power. You do not have to train to become an actual fighter, but, and this is a very important but, knowing that you have the capability of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody in hand-to-hand -hand combat, will give you greater confidence to pursue other challenges in life.
If you can get in the ring at your local boxing gym and duke it out with anyone there, then you're definitely going to have the confidence to do harder things in life. Other than learning how to fight and developing physical dominance, it's also wise to have friends with you whenever you plan to go out. The best forms of self-defense is having friends, knowing how to shoot, and simply not putting yourself in dangerous situations in the first place. There is no reason to be going out late at night. The Word of God tells us to put on the armor of light and to avoid the darkness of night. People who sleep during the day and awake at night typically have bad intentions, unless they have to work a third shift. But you can take it to the bank that the majority of scumbags in our world always do their dirty business at night, where the darkness is used as a cloak to hide themselves from the law. 6. Put away childish things. I had mentioned earlier men who wear shirts of their favorite superhero, obsess over fictional universes, and log in countless hours into their favorite video game. These are the childish things men need to put away from their life. I understand that video games are fun and can be a great stress reliever. And I am not suggesting that video games are only for little kids, as we do see many teenagers and adults playing them on a regular basis. What I do want to point out, though, is that they are not too different from playing with toys. And when I say that they are not too different, I mean it in a bad way. The difference is that video games give you a false sense of accomplishment, which is why you keep playing them. This makes them more harmful to men than toys do to little children. We can forgive children for wanting to play with these things and indulge in their wildest fantasies, but when they get older, they need to face the real world. Many of you know that I am a famous character from a popular video game called Fallout New Vegas. What makes games like Fallout New Vegas and Skyrim so popular is the world that you get to explore and the multitude of opportunities that allow you to grow in this world. You get stronger the more you fight, smarter the more you read. All of your physical and intellectual attributes increase the more you play, which then opens up more opportunities and side quests to take on. If there's one thing I want you to do right now, it's to stop playing these video games and to apply everything you love about them to your real life. This planet that we live on is far bigger than the world of Skyrim and Fallout combined. There are far more side quests to take on, adventures to embark on, skills to increase, opportunities to seize, and legacies to leave behind. The only person who is going to really care about the achievements you have made in a video game is only yourself. So get rid of the video games. Stop obsessing over fictional superheroes and read books that will help you instead and start dressing like a real man. No more shirts with flames, colorful designs, logos, superheroes, or cartoons. The best way to change the inner man is to create a different outer appearance. If you see yourself as a man, you will begin to behave like a man. If you see yourself as a man-child, then you will definitely behave like a man-child. On to the last and final point. 7. Receive eternal life and salvation. Before you do any of the other six things, it is most important you do this one thing first, and that is receive eternal life and salvation. It is important that you become a born-again child of God by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. If you have not watched any of the videos on this YouTube channel about how to go to heaven, then I strongly suggest you do that right now. There's even a playlist with these videos called How to Go to Heaven. The reason this is the most important thing is for one obvious reason. Your life on this earth is like a vapor compared to the eternity in the afterlife. You most definitely want to spend an eternity in heaven or the new earth rather than an eternity burning and in hellfire. Another reason it's important you get saved is so that God can help you and bless you in this life. You can go ahead and try doing these other things to help improve yourself as a man, 
but it would be much better and far easier for you with the blessings of God. If God is for you, then who could stand against you? Now, if you're not saved yet, go watch any of those presentations on what you must do to go to heaven. You'll be surprised at how easy it actually is. After you do that and begin to increase your value as a man, report back to me and feel free to share your accomplishments. Thank you for watching. Good luck and God bless you.